Okay, um, thank you all for joining in. Um, hope you got a chai or coffee. Okay, let's continue to look at um, the next basis for ministering healing and deliverance. The first one we saw was the nature of God. It's his nature to heal us. It's his covenant name, Jehovah Rapha. And the second basis for ministering healing and deliverance is the cross and the blood of Jesus, and uh, you know, which is made available to all. Why we minister in healing and deliverance is because the cross is for everyone. Okay, can we say that just loudly? Cross is for just me. Cross is for everyone. And because the cross is for everyone, I minister healing and deliverance, right, people? And the next, as if that was not enough, like that is more than enough for us to minister in healing and deliverance. But, you know, God is amazing. He, he keeps giving us more, you know, tools to work with. Uh, basis for ministering healing and deliverance, the next one is the Word of God. The Word of God. Okay, God works through his word. He creates through his word, right? Uh, God said and there was. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? He said, let there be, and there was. He said and there was. And so God's word creates, okay? His words creates his his word uh, god carries out his work through his word psalm 33 verse 6 and verse 9 psalm 33 verse 6 and verse 9 it says by the word of the lord the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth okay. by the word of the lord it's not even plural it's not words of the lord it's word singular <laughs> right by the word of the lord the heavens were made and verse 9 for he spoke and it was done he commanded and it stood fast think about the power of the word of god right just imagine the power of his word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Okay, that means he's saying, you are alive because I speak. <laughs> okay, you and I are alive because he speaks because of the power of his word his word sustains us right? it sustains the entire universe right just imagine the power of his word he said let there be and there was let there be light he said <laughs> and there was light i mean just think about it guys uh, again we we treat it like a very uh, like a very Sunday school thing, but when we say, uh, how many of you know what the speed of light is? What's the speed of light? <laughs> Three hundred thousand kilometers per second. Okay. Yeah, Dan, I think I just converted that, Daniel. <laughs> it's 300,000 kilometers per second. And he said that. When he said, let there be light, can you imagine how it should have just come into being? In a fraction of a second, a ray of light can travel across the globe seven times. It can go across the globe seven times. And I just did that. It goes so fast that you can't even make out the difference. It takes only eight minutes for light to reach from sun to earth. 
Can you say that again? How long does it take? Eight minutes for the light to reach from the sun to earth. Some of you are like, oh, eight minutes is so long. Uh, only if you know how far <laughs> earth is from the sun, you know? <laughs> I'm saying all of this not to show off that I know science. No, I absolutely was very bad at science. <laughs> uh, I hated it. But I'm, I just want us to turn our attention, our focus on this is one of the things that God said. Right? Just imagine the power of his word. In the scripture that we looked at, Titus chapter 1, verse 2 or 3, it says, uh, God is truth and he cannot lie. What does that mean? That means that anything that he says, his word is truth. Right? It carries a lot of power. Um, so, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. <clears throat> Hebrews 11 verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith we understand that the worlds were made or framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Okay, so the power of God is resident, or that means it's dwelling in his word. The power of God is resident in his word. Right? Why do we uh, do the declaration at APC every Sunday? This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am, etc., etc. Right? I am healed. I am delivered. I am saved. I am blessed. I am victorious. I am prosperous. I am a minister of God, a child, uh, you know child of Christ yeah. <laughs> and the channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I live by his word. And I, I believe his word. Thank you. <laughs> Why? Because there is power when we declare the word of God over our lives. Right? I think it's Psalm 18 that says, um, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing right or acceptable right may the words of my mouth be pleasing to you and again in the hebrews we see that without faith it is without faith it is impossible to please god. god and so that means psalm 19 is saying something that is connected to what the hebrew is saying that means the words of faith right when it's pleasing It moves God. Are you with me? Okay, so his word is resident. Uh, his power, God's power is resident in his word. That's the third basis for us to minister in healing and deliverance. Um, Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. Right? He sent his word and healed them. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, and, uh, verse 20 to 22. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Okay, pay attention to that. Give attention to my words. That means listen to what I'm saying. Pay attention to it. Why? Because do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Are you all following? Yeah. Um. There is power in His Word. It's His Word, the Word of God, uh, that sustains us, that brings about a ministering, uh, releasing, uh, you know, us from oppression and deliverance, um, and etc. Okay. Uh, let's let's continue uh, on this topic just a little bit. There's a scripture from First Thessalonians chapter two, verse thirteen. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse thirteen. It says, for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. 
because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So this is Paul talking about the church, about the people from Thessalonica. He's saying, hey, when you heard the word, you didn't treat that word like as if it was spoken by a man. You treated it like it was from the word from God. By you received it with faith. Right? That's what Paul is saying here. It's like uh, you welcomed it not as a word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. They welcomed it. Um, so they gave honor to God, the word of God, right? They they loved the word of God. They embraced the word of God. They understood uh, the power in his word. Now, when you get time a uh, little after the class, <laughs> is there's a video of a tribe in, I think, in Indonesia, um, you know, that receives the Bible in their language for the first time. Um, it's it's there on YouTube. I think it's a tribe in Indonesia. Yeah, um, the whole, you know, the the entire village gathers around this uh, airstrip where uh, the aeroplane comes and lands. You know, the whole village is there, and the 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 leader of that village is asked, uh, you know, why is everyone here? Uh, it says. We are about to receive the word in our own language for the first time. And then he goes on to say, the Bible says, God is the word. And so we want to welcome. Right? And you see, you and I, we are spoiled. Yeah. We are spoiled. NIV, NKJV, KJV, NASB, uh, what more V's are there? Uh, any more V's? ESV, okay, uh, ASV, CEV. <laughs> you know, we're spoiled for choices of all these different translations and versions that are easily be easily accessible for us, but we don't understand the value of not having the word. So what happens? We take it for granted. But then there are these people uh, who receive the word for the first time in their lives. And also, there's also this video of uh, uh, somewhere in China, underground, they receive the word, the Bible, for the first time. And you know, when you look at that, how they embrace it, uh, they're moved. Uh, you know, it's so emotionally. It teaches us something. We have to learn. We can't take the word of God for granted. The Bible that you and I have, just if you just understood what it carries and what it is, Right, it is the power of God that's dwelling in His Word, waiting to be unleashed, uh, you know, on on earth. Right? Are you with me? Yes. No. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, this uh, famous scripture passage chapter in Bible is John chapter six, uh, where Jesus preaches not his very uh, popular uh, message. He says, uh, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, <laughs> Jesus says, you, you know, uh, you'll be alive. And then everybody who followed him until then is like, what did you just say? Did you say, eat my flesh and drink my blood? No, thank you. We are going. So thousands of people left. And Jesus looks, turns back and he looks at Peter uh, and looks, uh, looks at his disciples and asks, are you also going to leave me? Peter is amazing, you know, sometimes. You don't understand, you know, you can't expect what comes out of his mouth, but when it when something good comes out of his mouth, it's like amazing. He says, Lord, where can we go? The words of life and truth are with you. Yeah? And we also know the other story where Peter is trying to catch fish the first time, you know, and... Uh, and then he hasn't caught any fish. And Jesus comes to him and says, okay, cast your net on the other side. What Peter says is, uh, you know, we've tried doing this all night, but we haven't caught any fish. Just think about it. Logically speaking, boat is there. Water. It's the same water which is on the left side and on the right side. Same water. Nothing is different. 
unless there's two different oceans, you know, it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> you know, if if I was there, I'm like, what are you saying? What's the logic behind this? Um, but Peter says this again, because you say, because you say so, because you have said these words, I'm going to cast this net on the other side. Obeying the word of God defies logic. Obeying God's word defies logic. And it is the same Peter who later in his letters writes, cast your burdens unto Jesus. Yeah? If Jesus did not stand in front of the tomb of Lazarus, and if Jesus had not called Lazarus by his name, and if he had just said, come out, all the dead men would have come out of the grave. I'm just saying. Right? The power of his word. We cannot take it for granted. We have the cross. That's more than enough. But God gives us his blood. As if that was not enough, he gives us his word. Guys, we have weapons of <laughs> mass destruction, spiritually speaking, okay? Uh, you know, waiting for us, you know, to step out in faith and start ministering and healing and deliverance. We have all of this at our disposal. Uh, it should not hinder us from ministering and serving in healing and deliverance. Are you with me? Yeah, okay. Let's move on. As if that was not enough, all of that is great, but another basis for ministering, healing, and deliverance is the spirit of power, the spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Lord Jesus ministered healings, deliverance, and miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit to heal and deliver. Okay, so, and we, we will refer to this as healing anointing. Okay, so everything, so when Jesus was here on earth, he was fully God and fully man, right? He was fully God. And fully man. So when we say that he was fully man, what does that mean? That means when Jesus was here on earth, he was no longer omnipresent. Right? He was confined to one place. Right? He when he was when he was here on earth, he was not omnipotent. What does omnipotent mean? Omnipotent matlab? All, All powerful. powerful. Yeah, that means he was not omnipotent. He got tired. He slept. He was hungry, he ate, he was thirsty, he drank water, right? He was sleepy, he slept. Omniscient, all-knowing. He was no longer all-knowing. The scripture says that he grew in wisdom. But everything what Jesus did here on earth, he did it with the power of the Holy Spirit. Think about this. Look at me for a minute, second, and just think about this. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is saying, he's looking at his disciples and he's saying, it is good for me that I go away. Because the one who comes after me, who I send, will help you do what I did and do greater things. I want you to just think about that. If Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, he said, it is better for me that I go away so that I can send the Holy Spirit, how important should that be? Are you thinking about it? Good. <laughs> okay, because everybody went silent all of a sudden. It's like, hmm. <laughs> hey, what about you guys online? Are you doing all okay? Uh, okay, the camera is here. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Still alive, right? Okay, are you learning something, guys? 
uh yeah okay i just hope i'm not downloading data on you <laughs> awesome awesome okay so let's look at the scripture that says luke chapter 4 verse 17 to 19 luke chapter 4 verse 17 to 19 this is again the scripture that was written by prophet isaiah okay again almost how many years ago isaiah lived 800 years almost all right give or take <laughs> right, so isaiah wrote and then it's quoted in luke the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And Jesus says this in Luke, right? He takes the scroll and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is a powerful scripture, and uh, I we can just discuss about this for 45 minutes, about the cultural context of this. Because after Jesus says this verse, right? after Jesus reads the scroll, right, those days you go to a synagogue, the, you know, the Bible was not there, right? Every, they all had scrolls because it was expensive to have a scroll at home not everybody had it that's why people went to the synagogues so that they could hear the word of god they, not all everybody at home had the scroll you had to be very 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 wealthy so they would go to the synagogues just to hear the word of god and so a rabbi of that synagogue right would pick a scroll in order it is not just a random scroll pick a scroll in order and open it up and read the scripture and teach on it, explain about it. So here, Jesus is reading the scripture. He's in the synagogue, he's taking a scroll, he's open, and then after he reads this, he doesn't speak a word. He just goes and sits at the place where a leader, where a leader sits. He doesn't say anything. So he reads this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, which Isaiah wrote 800 years ago. He reads the scripture and then he just sits. In a way that he is saying, uh, yeah, the scripture that I read, just read, yeah, it's me. <laughs> You remember when Pilate asks him the question, are you the truth? Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus just stands there. Yeah, what Jesus is saying, you're looking at the truth. I am the truth. He doesn't say anything, but in a way, without saying, he is saying. Yes or no? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, all right, let's move on. Luke chapter 5, verse 17, some more scriptures for us. Luke 5 verse 17, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. What is it referring to? The spirit of the living God was there to heal them. Okay, Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Hebrews 2 verse 3 and 4 How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Okay. 
Uh, one last scripture, okay? Is that okay? One last scripture. It's all in the notes, by the way. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Matthew 12, verse 28. It says, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. If I cast out demons, that means if you are set free, if you are delivered by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. All right, so the presence of the Holy Spirit stops the demonic works. Okay, I'll say that again. The presence of the Spirit of the living God stops the demonic works. And all of this is to remind us that you and I have this same Holy Spirit that's been made available to us. There's no partiality. Jesus did not have a separate Holy Spirit. You and I have not having a different Holy Spirit. 2,000 years later, we still have the same Holy Spirit that is available for you and for me. Luke 24, 49. Most of you don't seem to believe that, but let's see. Luke 24, 49. It says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. He's saying, but I send the promise of my Father. Who is he talking about? Jesus. Who is Jesus talking about? My Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay. <clears throat> right, so the fourth basis of uh, ministering, healing and deliverance was what? The Spirit of God. So the first four, what, what have we covered so far? The nature of God, the cross, the Word of God the and blood. the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yes, and the blood covenant Yeah, is it, part of the cross. Okay, thank you. Let's move on. The next basis for ministering healing and deliverance is the name of Jesus. It keeps getting better, no? Right? As if his nature wasn't enough to know. Okay, As if the cross wasn't enough for us. Uh, he gives us his word as if his word wasn't enough he gives us the holy spirit as if that was not enough he, he's like yeah you know, wait i'm more good you know just i like to keep adding to it uh take my name it's, of, it's also for you right so jesus during his um earthly ministry he authorized and delegated his disciples to go in his name. He said, okay, go in my name and do so and so things. Right? Luke chapter 10. Let's look at Luke chapter 10, verse 1, and then verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. It says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Okay, the story gets interesting. Verse 17, Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Some of scriptures, John 14, 13. Whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The name of Jesus, the beautiful name of Jesus. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. 
and the prayer of faith will ha save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven so when we um, use the name of Jesus when we use the name of Jesus we are standing in his place we are doing things as if what Jesus would do if he was present can I say that again when you and I say in the we, we use this word all the time right we have gathered together in the name of Jesus we are gathered together in the name of Jesus that means our gathering should be like the gatherings of how it would look if Jesus was present <clears throat> we've been given that name Uh, how many of you uh, remember in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, uh, when Saul is blind, um, Saul, before Saul, Paul, um, God tells Ananias, I want you to go and anoint Saul. Ananias is very afraid. He's like, Lord, don't you know who this person is? He kills Christians. What if he kills me? Why do you want me to go and anoint him? Why do you want me to go and meet him? What if he kills me? But God tells something beautiful to, Anani uh, to Ananias. He said, go because I have chosen him to carry my name. It says in Acts chapter 9 verse 15, I have chosen him to carry my name. I, I, I think I've done this exercise with us before uh, about the different brands. Different brands. Let's, uh, what's some of your favorite brands? What are some of your favorite brands, guys? Nike, Reebok, Adidas. Yes or no? Uh, what are the guys? Come on, please help me out. Give me some. Give me some brand names. Um, Bata. Puma. Puma. Okay, you can also type it out if you want. Yeah, H and M. Come on, now the names are coming in. Send it. Send it. Okay. <laughs> Samsung, Apple. How can we leave Apple out, right? <laughs> Uh, Marshall, Gibson, Fender. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, some fancy names are coming out. Louis Vuitton. If I didn't know how to pronounce that name properly, I would say Louis Vuitton. <laughs> uh, US Polo. Yeah. Mercedes. Yeah. Jaguar. Um, Gucci. Okay. Come on. Joseph, what's your favorite brand? Come on, Joseph. One plus phone you're using, okay? So one plus, <laughs> one plus twelve or eleven? One plus fifteen? I don't know. <laughs> uh, what is? What is? What is? Okay, Yamaha. Uh, all these musicians. Um, Roland. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Marshall, Fender, Gibson. Come on, Warren. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. So. You see these uh, sportsmen, right? Some of these cricket players, tennis players, football players, etc., uh, etc. Et they get these, uh, what is it called? Uh, em what's that? Ambassadors, their ambassador or uh, brand ambassadors. Yeah. So they get a deal, right? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sponsorships, correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> rare rabbit accident. <laughs> I remember a time when Sachin Tendulkar uh, used a bat with a sticker called MRF, right? In like the early 90s and early 2000s and all of that. Every single kid wanted a bat with MRF. Yeah. Roger Federer wears a Nike bandana, Nike Onamaha. Everybody wants to wear Nike, you know? <laughs> Uh, so what is happening is all of these brands, doesn't matter, from all the brands that you mentioned, all of them want you to carry their name. Yeah, they want you to carry their name. They want to be seen through you, by you. 
isn't it? That's all they want. Why do they have a certain brand on their in the front of their shirt, like you know, US Polo, big one here or whatever? Is because they want you to carry their name. And then in Acts chapter 9, verse 15, we see that Jesus is, says that I have chosen him to carry my name. So, like it or not, it might not be visible, right? But you and I, we carry the name of Jesus. We've been chosen to carry his name. We are his brand ambassadors. Because of that, that is another basis for you and for me to minister, to serve in healing and deliverance. Are you understanding? Right From the nature of God to the cross of Jesus Christ, for his blood and his word, his Holy Spirit and his name. It's beautiful. I mean, yeah, it doesn't end there. <laughs> The next basis for ministering healing and deliverance is faith. Faith. Just a couple more and we'll close, okay? Great. Now I know who what what's everyone's favorite brand. Mm -hmm. Cyril's favorite brand is Ray Rabbit, guys. Okay, so <laughs> Someone has typed Nokia. Come on, Daniel. Wow. <laughs> you could kill a person with those phones back then. <laughs> Nokia 3310. Nokia 1100 was my first mobile phone. The one that came torch, you know, with the torch. It was the first one. Now we're like, oh, I have torch in my phone. It's like, oh, please, guys. <laughs> Right. The next basis for ministering healing and deliverance is uh, faith. Faith in God is essential when ministering healing and deliverance. Um, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 to 21, let's all uh, look at it. Um, I'm, I'll read it for us. Matthew 17, verse 19 to 21, it says, Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, <laughs> Jesus had no chill, like, you know, he was like, yeah, because of your unbelief. Just imagine Jesus saying that. It's like, you know, very you know, very innocently you go and ask, Jesus, Jesus, why couldn't we do that? I'm like, because of your unbelief, <laughs> you know. Uh, For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However... This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So, um, we looked at the importance of declaring the words of faith, isn't it? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And may the words of my mouth be pleasing to you. Right? So, the words of faith, uh, you know, it creates an atmosphere to God to come in minister right the only time in the gospels we read where jesus did not do uh, miracles is when people around him were not filled with faith right they took uh, they just saw him as a son of a carpenter like, jesus son of joseph who's a carpenter really he can do all these things nah. right jesus just didn't do anything else but faith is very essential for us to move um you, we all remember the story of the centurion, uh, right? Who comes to Jesus? Right? It's again kind of correlating with the previous point, with the power of his word. He comes to him and says, "Lord, I am a man in authority. I know the power it's carry. If I say to this person, do it, it it will be done." So he's saying, "You don't have to come to pray." What kind of faith is that? Is it? Just say it.
right? And Jesus is sleeping nicely on the boat. <laughs> uh, and the disciples wake Jesus up. And what's the what's the first thing they say? They're like, uh, sorry, don't you care that you know uh, that we will perish? <laughs> um, but how did that story? How does that story start? It starts by saying, Jesus saying, "Let us go to the other side." Jesus has said that, no? That means it's his will. Jesus wants to go to the other side. That means we are going to the other side no matter what. <laughs> isn't it? Uh, but that's where the faith was challenged, isn't it? It is during the trials and the storms of life that we end when we go through, our, our faith is challenged. But it is in times like that, we need to remember that Jesus is in our boat. Yeah? OK. <clears throat> Are you all with me? Okay, and one last point, and we will uh, one last two points, and we will uh, close for today. And the last two points for uh, ministering, healing, and deliverance. The basis for ministering and healing and deliverance is the kingdom of God and commission. The kingdom of God and commission. Um, Matthew chapter sixteen was eighteen to nineteen. It says, "And I also say to you that you are Peter, and so on this rock." I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay, so Jesus is talking about a church where you know on this rock he says when he says that I will build the church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The kingdom of darkness will not prevail against the kingdom of God. Now, in your Bible, when this chapter starts, Matthew 16 starts, or uh, somewhere, or you will see a section called uh, Philippi, uh, Caesarea Philippi. Does it is it written over there? When this chapter starts, Caesarea Philippi. No? Yeah? No, no. So uh, somewhere, at least in the middle of the chapter, the subheading will be 13. It says Caesarea Philippi, right? OK. So. Um, all right, just look at me. I'll, I'll give one quick history lesson and we'll close. So, <laughs> now there, Jesus takes his disciples and they, they go to this place called Caesarea Philippi. OK, now, um, at that time, there was a king called Herod, right? And Herod had three sons. Uh, Philip was one of the names, and there were two other sons' names, which I forget, I can't recall. Um, Caesarea means Caesar, right? Because Caesar was the emperor of Rome. Rome was still ruling Jerusalem, uh, Israel at that time, right? So he named a place after his son, but the first name was Caesar, in honor of Caesar. So Caesarea Philippi. Now, that place was up north, OK? So you know you have Jerusalem down at the south. I want you to imagine, if you look at a map, you can understand. So Jerusalem was in the south, and Caesarea Philippi was up here in the north just below Mount Hermon, where the Mount of Transfiguration is happens. Okay, So Caesarea Philippi in the north, that region was prohibited for all the Jews to enter. Why? Because it was in that region the most uh, occultic practice of worship used to happen. That means all uh, uh, sacrifices, like child sacrifice, animal sacrifice, Everything evil, right? Think about everything evil. Uh, think about Sodom and Gomorrah and multiply it by 100. OK, that's how bad all these practices used to happen in that region called Philippi, Caesarea Philippi. Um, you know, and there was, there was this god called Banaris, not Banaris, uh, Bananias. Banaris is Varanasi, right? So what am I saying? Uh, the Greek god Pan, OK? Um, he was half human, 
the body was human but his head was like a goat that was the god the idol thing that they used to worship people in that region okay called pan later became banias um and so uh just imagine with me okay in that region there was a huge cave at the back okay a huge cave now inside that cave was also like a water uh, you know streams of water it was abundance of water because mount hermon which was full of, filled with snow uh, was was rich and so waters would come and so these people would practice sacrifices what they would do is if they kill an animal uh, like a goat and if they throw it into the water if if the goat goes down that means their sacrifice is accepted if the goat if the sacrifice floats on the water that means their sacrifice was not accepted the people there believed uh, because they were into the harvest and what not so and that cave right the entrance of that cave was known as the gate to the underworld okay the cave was known as a gateway to the underworld so jesus has taken his disciples into this geographical setting and he's making them look at all these things you see this kingdom of darkness here do you see that kingdom at the gates of hell hades the church that i build will not be stopped by these are you with me right the church that i build will move in power and in and the king my kingdom will come here on earth as it is in heaven and as it advances it will not be stopped by the the gates of hell Are you with me right and so that's another basis for us to minister in healing and deliverance it is absolutely powerful uh we have to understand what we've been given and finally we've been commissioned that means you've taken the sword that's to your left right shoulder left shoulder you have been commissioned to go <laughs> okay but we are still sitting you know in acts chapter uh, the day of the pentecost happens in which chapter acts chapter 2 okay so jesus says don't go out anywhere wait in jerusalem until you've been filled with the holy spirit right so after they, that means after they were filled with the holy spirit they were supposed to go out into jerusalem judea samaria and everything but it is not until chapter 8 where the people of the christians or the church begins to get persecuted that means it is almost 8 years later 8 years later they were supposed to go out but they didn't they were still living in jerusalem uh, it took a persecution <clears throat> to begin for them to go out of from jerusalem Uh, so that means they did not understand that they were commissioned um so you and i you need to we need to know that we've been commissioned to go out to minister to serve in healing ministering healing and deliverance amen okay <laughs> all right guys that's it okay i'm going <laughs> to stop here uh okay so once again i really hope that there was something that you could learn and take away from today's class uh, we've covered quite a bit of content um and uh yeah All right. So thank you all for just being alive and attentive and being great students. So I'll see you all next week. All right. Thanks guys. Take care.